Okay, so yeah, thank you all for joining once again. Let's start. Uh, so today's topic is going to be about the interesting topic. I think the whole uh, recent news about Rockset is uh, creating a lot of waves across different companies. And uh, we wanted to showcase how people can migrate from Rockset to ClickHouse and in a more easy way using Double Cloud. So let's proceed a little bit more about ourselves. Yeah. So myself, Deepan, I'm working as a senior product manager here at Double Cloud. I'm responsible for all the product related initiatives and features within Double Cloud. And uh, Andre, what about you? Yes. Hello, my name is Andre. I'm uh, engineering lead for Double Cloud. I'm mostly responsive for, responsible for our transfer service, uh, which handle ingestion uh, pipelines for ClickHouse. And uh, we'll basically present a demo today because uh, migration is always a complicated process and having something visible and demoable uh, uh, is very important. That's we will show. That's why we will show you for you how you can migrate your data pipelines to the Double Cloud. Yeah, so stay tuned. So we have a some cool demos uh, planned in upcoming slides. So we'll hear more about the actual product itself and how you can help you in migrating from Rockset. And a little bit about Double Cloud. So Double Cloud is a platform where you can build this entire data infrastructure within all single one place, uh, right from data ingestion layer until visualization layer. We have all these different components. So before we proceed, so we have a small survey uh, for you guys so that you can we kind of know like what type of audience and what you guys are actually looking for so that we can help you in more much more better way. So I'm going to launch this uh, survey. Yes. Yeah, so take your time and then please fill this survey. And meanwhile, let's proceed. So why are we having this webinar? I think this is like the recent top news in the data world recently with the acquisition of Rockset by OpenAI. It's created like a lot of buzz around industry. Like why this sudden move and what has really happened? Which is in a way good, like at least uh, there's AI adoption going on and people really see that uh, they need a really a fast processing data store somewhere. And this really shows that we are also in the right direction and we are also heading a right way. So which is really cool. And the sad part is like all the customers who have been with Rockset have to be looking for some alternatives and they have some strict deadlines by September 30, they have to kind of off board from the Rockset. So the time is really, really critical here. And that's why we are here to help. And we'll see more about how ClickHouse, Double Cloud ClickHouse can really help you guys in, in the migration process and also other components within Double Cloud. So why first of all choose ClickHouse? So ClickHouse is like, known for its fast real-time analytics itself. It's like one of the top-notch uh, database for real-time analytics, offering its remarkable features and functionality in terms of like, be it like query, swift query processing or its efficient storage engine itself makes a perfect solution for handling like large volume of data. Also with its greater compression engine, it has the ability to handle all this low latency data that is kind of flowing in through the uh, ClickHouse itself because of its columnar data store and uh, all this new indexing techniques what it has inbuilt, baked in to ClickHouse makes it more super efficient for handling this plots. Right, Andrew, what do you think? Yeah, and I'll, one other, one more thing that ClickHouse is a good example of more real time analytical databases, uh, which more focused about handling queries fast and actually handles handles query uh, with a high concurrency. So you actually can use this ClickHouse not just as a classical database for serving for small amount of people dashboards or ad hoc analytics, but also by serving real time analytics for end customers uh, under heavy concurrency. ClickHouse is very good for handling at tons of queries per second. That's true. I think this number really shows that uh, the benchmark, it's really like super fast. Like you can just imagine processing millions of rows in a couple of seconds. It's optimized for all the sub-second queries. Like you can see here when it compared with different data store, the performance is really, really uh, so high. And it's not just about performance itself. So when you're also deploying it with like going ahead with double cloud clickhouse, in that case, the cost versus performance also becomes more and more important. And it's also super efficient overall as a package. And we see like click yeah. Because adoption is also really, really growing. And we see like a lot of big companies are also like using, you can see like big logos here down below, Uber, Spotify, all these big companies are already uh, trusting ClickHouse and they have already moved their data workloads to ClickHouse to make it more efficient and faster.
Andrew, you had something to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to add a couple things that ClickHouse allow you not just to build the real-time queries very fast on like uh, your hard drive, but also it have a cold storage capability. So you can actually cool down your data to S3 and therefore you can scale a ClickHouse infinitely uh, due to the nature of uh, decoupled storage in a computer. If you you offload the storage to S3, the compute power would be quite limited on a comparison to the amount of data that you actually store in the ClickHouse. The amount can be very big, like petabyte scale, but uh, the nodes for compute can be relatively small to handle such data. Makes sense. That's that's a hybrid storage capability what we have within Double Cloud, so you guys can leverage that, which is further going to reduce the cost down. And uh, since it's not always going to be in like a hot storage, but almost in the cold industry. Moving ahead, so now let's talk more about like Rockset versus uh, Double Cloud ClickHouse. So first and foremost thing is like uh, we are true to open source and uh, we the products the the, black, the tools what we choose is also like uh, the proven open source tooling. So there's no vendor lock in in any way like uh, to make yourself lock because it it kind of becomes a problem like when you wanted to migrate from a specific tool which is a locked in solution then it's really really pain like you need to look for an exact replica of an alternative solution, try to map it and move. All these things are really, really hassle, but we don't have such vendor lock-in. And that's really, really a huge advantage with such a solution. And the second thing is what I talked about, like cost versus performance ratio. It's also like super high. Like you, you, you get a top-notch performance for a much lower cost. And we also have different deployment models, like be it like they want to deploy this specific solution on your own cloud. So we can just, just for the reasons of privacy or data residency, you can use a bring your own cloud. So in way you can just deploy these clusters within your own uh, data ecosystem, whichever uh, uh, cloud provided one. We are currently on AWS and GCP, so it, it's totally possible. And the, the what we keep hearing from like Rockset customers is also more about the ingestion part. That's what we really, really wanted to more focus about like this independent scale of uh, data ingestion pipelines makes it more standard out from this cluster so that it's all separated and then it, it scales up to the data volume that's needed. Andrew, you can add more to it. Yeah. Here. I can add a couple words here. One of the key uh, flaws that usually the open source ClickHouse have has uh, it's uh, uh, bundling the ingestion and the uh, actual storage and compute and execution of a query on the same machine. We and Double Cloud try to fix this problem by introduction hybrid storage for decoupling storage from a compute and introduction a transfer to decoupling ingestion pipeline from a compute. And that's why you can actually scale independently for both storage in double cloud and ingestion. You can do ingestion pipelines separately from a click house and uh, the click house can serve just your queries. And if your query is critically uh, important in terms of latency and uh, concurrency, then it's very uh, nice to go solution for you. Yeah, that's true, right? Because in terms of uh, like when there's a large volume of data that's ingested, ClickHouse, I think, gives priority to the queries rather than the ingestion. So it's best to keep it more uh, decoupled in a way so that all the process of ingestion happens in a separate node. And on top of it, other technical things is like we we also have like other management layer on top of all these clusters and transfers, which is going to add more capability in terms of clear visibility, logs, monitoring, all these things are baked in. So there's no need of any additional operation efforts that's needed on top of it. And uh, it's going to be like just out of box solution. So man uh, out of box and it's also like uh, uh, no vendor lock in and there's no way that we're going to lock you in this ecosystem. So it is cool. So a little bit more on like why exactly, a little bit more on the technical details, like because of its uh, less resource utilization, be it like it can, it has capabilities of handling like large volume of data. And uh, because of its the nature of the ClickHouse itself makes it more efficient that it consumes less resources, again, which is related to again cost. So it's going to bring you like much, bring your cost down. Also it supports like materialized view for like most powerful features is that like, Data is automatically updated in the target table and it's updated in source. And also it um, has this a SQL support, makes data querying much more easier. And it's it's very commonly known now, uh, SQL. So it's very popular. It makes it more flexible for data analysts and also data engineers to work on uh, ClickHouse. It's not something, a new pro uh, protocol or a new standard that uh, ClickHouse is introducing. Do you want to add something here, Andrew? 
Yeah, I want to also add one one interesting aspect of a ClickHouse. ClickHouse, it's a little bit similar in Org, to Org Search in many features, uh, and uh, but the ClickHouse itself usually lack of some features that Org Search has, and we at Double Cloud actually try to fit uh, in the missed gaps. The one of thing is uh, ingestion, and another thing is hybrid storage. We have here at the Double Cloud both of them, and another thing that's very important for ClickHouse is that. Uh, we have uh, uh, like vanilla version of a ClickHouse, so you don't need to do any uh, adaptation uh, for a ClickHouse. So we don't try to uh, to to adjust the, the solution itself. So it's just a vanilla ClickHouse. If you like the approach, if you like the ClickHouse itself, but you don't like a platform where it's located, you can just go to another vendor or do self search services. It's one more. Uh, aspects that we actually are keen to this. It's not just about the the product decision. It's part of our strategy and the culture. We uh, open source based company, so we try to be uh, make everything open source and not uh, interferes there. We not conflicting with open source here. That's true. So speaking of which, he has a holistic picture of how double cloud platform looks like. So we have different components, like right from the ingestion layer on the left side, you can see like different sources that you can connect to, be it DynamoDB or Kinesis or any other sources like Postgres, Snowflake. And on the right side is more like the visualization component. So in inside we have like uh, different services. We uh, provide like Manage ClickHouse is one of them, Manage Kafka. So everything is packaged in one single, uh, uh, under a single roof. So it's not necessary that the customers have to just go ahead and buy this whole uh, box. It's more like a, we made it more flexible so that depends in, depending on the customer's use case, they can just pick and choose different components. And the beauty of the uh, double cloud is like all these things are well integrated when you are using, let's say with a double cloud kickoffs and double cloud transfer, all these things are well tightly integrated. So there's no F extra operational effort or extra development efforts needed to make them to talk each other as well. And we also recently uh, launched a managed airflow on top of it. So if, if you wanted to have some additional uh, data orchestration capabilities that you want to achieve on top of ClickHouse or data transfer, yeah, you still have this uh, beautiful open source data orchestration tool built on top of it. On the center, you can see your transfer. That's our um, uh, ClickHouse native uh, ETL ELD services. So within which you can just connect different sources. So we have our own sources and also we rely on open source uh, add byte connectors as well, with which you can just connect it. And then you have also have a transformation layer on top of it. So you can do it more like ETL or ELD. It's so more like a choice uh, we have. It's, so that that's the thing that we wanted to have like we don't want it to restrict any customers to, hey, you have to only process in this way or this way. So it's pretty much like a customizable open solution. So uh, users, and, and at the same time, it's not too cumbersome as well. It's more easy to use. I think more you will hear, see when Andre is going to show it in a demo, uh, how it's going to uh, work. So currently we are on AWS and uh, GCP. So Azure is something that uh, we are working on. Uh, so we'll hear more about uh, it uh, soon. So the next one, so here are some of the customers use case where we see uh, our customers are coming from, like in terms of real-time analytics, clickstream behaviors, or observability, or logging, uh, for, for the purpose of logging as well, the customers use like for search query logs and predictive analytics. So these are like different set of customers where we see, if you see uh, this common pattern that we see, like all these use cases really, really need a like really access of data really, really fast. So that's what uh, Double Cloud ClickHouse brings in. And that's what we are actually so uh, known for in terms of the use case itself. So let's jump in more detail about the transfers because this is what we see, keep hearing uh, from customers about like ingestion and how we can actually migrate. So Andre, you can talk more about it. Here. Yes, so the, uh, one of the key design flows of ClickHouse of Vanilla ClickHouse is they, they com uh, combine the ingestion layer inside of the database and it's not fully decoupled. And uh, we actually in double, uh, a double cloud uh, introduce a transfer service, which is Cloud, Net Cloud Native ClickHouse uh, ELC service that allow you to ingest any amount of data under any speed, any uh, uh, form to the ClickHouse. We try to focus on uh, two aspects here, uh, to have a variety of connectors and to have a 
uh, performance in mind because usually for click house uh, performance is a king and having the performant uh, connectors is important. We uh, internally have a lot of customers that already on board the service and they scale this transfer service for an enormous amount of uh, ingestion time, ingestion speed, uh, up to two gigabytes per second for a streaming ingestion for a single click house cluster, which is a extremely uh, extremely powerful thing. So that's actually what we are trying to we will show you. I will show you a small demo how to do, uh, how to co coordinate the migration efforts because migration efforts often uh, uh, include the migration of the core of your data infrastructure, which is a data pipeline. Uh, can, can we go to the next slide? Yes, so the next slide is what about the demo. And the first one would be the classical migration from a rock set. The diagram here is uh, basically shows the data flow uh, uh, of proposed migration. So Rockset itself is a database. We don't have Rockset DB uh, connector natively, but we have the connector for S3. And Rockset itself has support very nice selecting sort capabilities that allow you to export data to S3 bucket uh, in a parquet format. Parquet format is a very powerful format for transferring data because it's self-described. Uh, described. You already have a schema in it. You already have all necessary type information. So it's very easy to to, co uh, to coordinate between storages. So let me share my screen and I will show you how easy to, how to, how to integrate S3 bucket uh, files from S3 files uh, to a click house with a transfer uh, uh, when in a parquet format. So let me share my screen. Uh, this is basically how Double Cloud looks like. Uh, this is our console application, basically a web UI where you can uh, see all the components of a Double Cloud. First of all, I did already create a ClickHouse cluster, Rockset demo. Uh, this cluster is uh, relatively small, I just for demo purpose, uh, but uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, good enough for this this particular demo. So uh, let's do the first uh, demo for migration. Migration is usually one-time process in this particular case. You just need to export all your existing data to S3 bucket and then copy this data to a uh, to, uh, click house. For double cloud transfer, we call such transfers as a snapshot transfers. And let's create the first one. The first, to create a transfer, you need to create endpoints. Basically, a transfer in terms of double cloud is a uh, uh, connection of a two endpoints, source endpoint and a target endpoint. So for the source endpoint, we will use here an object storage endpoint. Object storage endpoint is something that's compatible with object storage API from Amazon, Amazon S3 API. Uh, we will use uh, here Amazon S3 source. I did already prepare the, uh, the data. So I export some yellow trip data taxi uh, to S3 bucket. And I will just copy this URI and try to ingest this information. So I will just put this URI here. Uh, I don't need the just one bucket file. I need the whole folder. So this one is my uh, uh, my uh, demo data length. For then we need to specify the credentials. Uh, let me find my credentials. So this is my credentials and I need to copy access key here and copy secret key here. So this is our connection settings. We set the URI for our bucket in S3 and we set up the credentials to this S3 bucket. Next thing we need to specify the format of the data. We will use a parquet file. We also have a replication capabilities for S3 source. Uh, the replication capabilities utilize SQS uh, queue. This SQS queue uh, will notify us about new files, and then we will pick, it, pick them up uh, regularly and replicate them to a ClickHouse. For this particular case, we will not use this feature because we just need one-time migration. Uh, and we need the name a table. So the table would be named as uh, rockset taxi. Demo. So that's basically it. Uh, once we submit, we have a, a source endpoint in a double cloud. Next thing, what we need to do is to create a target endpoint where this data would land. The target endpoint, obviously, a click house, Roxette demo click house. 
this is a managed cluster, so we don't need to specify anything except the database when we need to learn this data, and we will use a default one, so we don't think about database question. In a ClickHouse, you can group your data in an abstraction called database. So that's basically it. Everything else would be took as a default. And this is our target uh, endpoint. This source and target endpoint is a uh, good enough uh, source material to create the first transfer. The first transfer here would be create a transfer, select a three source as a source endpoint, and a, uh, a click house target as a target endpoint, and let's name it like rock set S3 snapshot. Rock set demo S3 snapshot. It's the snapshot transfer. As you can see, there is other options like a replication or snapshot and replication. This is basically about how to fetch the a replication or increment of data. So a snapshot here would be sufficient because we just need to initial snapshot of data. There is also option to scale the transfer in terms of parallelism. You can introduce like more uh, worker threads or worker nodes. Uh, basically, this is an option how to speed up a copy. I will not use it for the demo purposes because usually it's need to just bigger amount of data and we have just four files, sorry. Uh, and that's it. That's basically a transfer. Once I submit it, it just created. This transfer is uh, here. For once you create it, it's not do not doing, doing nothing. To make it uh, active, you need to activate it. So let me click the activate button. And this activate button will spin up a process in the background to copy this data to a ClickHouse. The data itself would land in the ClickHouse in a structured way because of the nature of a, of a parquet file. S3 source will uh, fetch the parquet information, metadata headers uh, of the parquet files, and the parquet file will uh, mimic structure in a ClickHouse. So we'll automatically infer schema from a click from a parquet file and lend the schema to a ClickHouse. So you don't need to do anything basically here. Uh, so the data is here. Uh, as you can see, it's already started a snapshotting. Uh, there is approximately 11 million of rows of the data. So we can try to, since it's already the start of snapshotting, we can see a progress in the actual target database. So if, you, if, you have, if I go to the cluster page and go to cluster detail screen, just click on the cluster here, I will see a cluster information. And there is in the top right uh, location of this cluster information, we have a web SQL, which allow you to, to explore your cluster information. I click on it and my cluster is uh, already spin up. It already have a default database. Let me connect to it. And in this def default database, I already can see rock set taxi demo table. In this taxi rock set demo table, there is already rows that we are snapshotting from, uh, from parquet file in S3. There is a file name which we uh importing there is some information like a trip date uh trip distance etc there is a bunch of columns and as you can see if it queries the count over amount of rows in this table you'll see there is like three millions three three and a four million so it's steadily growing and this is basically what we have uh uh, happened in the background. Uh, in the background, we have a transfer, which is a snapshot in our data. Uh, the snapshot, in, we already transferred a couple millions of rows. We can see the progress here. It's 31% of data, and we can see an approximate estimated time to arrive the whole data set. It would take like a couple minutes. So this is basically the snapshot, uh, snapshot demo. For rock set migration for initial data, this is a uh, go-to approach. You just export everything to S3 bucket in a parquet format, and then import this parquet bucket back to the ClickHouse. The, the schema would be automatically adapted. The data would be landed perfectly to a ClickHouse, and that basically it. Uh, I will stop share my screen and go back to the presentation. Uh, yes, let's go to the next slide. Uh, Actually, the migration is not just about the existing data. You also need to take care about new data. Uh, usually new data in a rock set arrive via some in some streaming technology or some CDC techniques. In our case, uh, we see a lot of customers that interact with a DynamoDB uh, and they need to fetch the DynamoDB data in a 
into rock set and do analytics on top of them. So in this next demo, we will we will explore how to track new records from a dynamic DB in a real time and lend them to a click house. Uh, for this particular case, we, we will use dynamic DB plus Kinesis data streams. Kinesis data stream will track change data capture and we will replicate those change data capture to a click house. Uh, that's basically it. That's our uh, next uh, demo. Let me share my screen one more time. I will just switch back to the presentation to show you this beautiful, beautiful diagram. Okay, the next demo is here. Let me share my screen one more time. Continue. So we come back to, back to the double cloud platform. As you can see, this snapshot is still going. It's already 7 million throws. It's approximately 74% of progress. It would be finished in a minute. Uh, in the background, we will start to set up the DynamoDB replication. The DynamoDB replication is actually not from DynamoDB. It's from Kinesis. So uh, I did prepare the DynamoDB demo table. It's called streaming table. In this streaming table, we have uh, ID field and a couple more columns. Uh, and also this DynamoDB table is actually, let's go to the tables, this table of DynamoDB. This table is actually connected as export stream to the Kinesis data stream. So I will replicate data not from DynamoDB directly, but from Kinesis data destination stream. So I just took this destination stream and start to create a transfer. So I come back to the transfer page and do pretty much the same thing as for S3 source, but for Kinesis source. I create a source endpoint, specify here a Kinesis data stream. I specify a stream name, a region, it's in London. Probably, I don't remember actually. Yes, it's in London. Uh, so, uh, next thing I need to copy paste the credentials. It's a secret. I will not show you the credentials. And secret key. So next thing, the uh, specifying a schema. The Kinesis data stream is semi-structured uh, data flow. This is uh, basically means that we need to specify how to track data, how to extract data from this uh, from this uh, data stream. For this need, we have a conversion rules. In this particular example, conversion rule would be set up. I don't know the format about uh, Kinesis data stream. It's a JSON uh, rows and a JSON uh, objects and a JSON object to represent a change in a row. So I will specify a specification of JSON uh, conversion here. First of all, we need to track an ID column this ID column, as far as I know, is UTF string. And this UTF string is actually is uh, uh, located inside DynamoDB new item ID as pass. So we have a feature called pass, which allow you to pick particular uh, field from a JSON object. This is how we pick it. And we will mark it as a key, as a required attribute. The next field that we need to take from this table, let's go back to the tables and see what exactly this table have. As far as I know, there's three columns. Yes, we have age column and we have name column. So let's add age column. It looks like a number to me. Uh, let it be double. And we have us here age. Also, we have a name. Name. It's also a string. Oh, it's not a string. It's UTF eight string. And we have a name. So this will create for us a stream with the three columns, but also since it's a change data capture stream, uh, we may add more information. For example, we can add approximate create time for this uh, particular event. 
And this is just a system uh, information from the DynamoDB. It's DynamoDB approx creation type. This information show when this row appears in DynamoDB. And next thing that we can show here is a last event. This last event is basically a string. Uh, it's just an event name. It's either create, delete, or update record from a kinesis. So this specification will form our target table in a click house. And this will actually uh, took necessary information from a kinesis a replication stream. Another thing that we can uh, enable here, we can create enable missing keys for columns. It will create a special column to which aggregate all information that not fit to this particular schema, so extra information. And uh, that's basically it. Yes, that's it. Let's submit it. Oh, I forgot to name. This is demo stream. So this is our source endpoint, and let's create another transfer. Uh, meanwhile, this transfer is done. Uh, let's create another transfer, and this is Kinesis, this is Roxette demo, Kinesis replication. This particular source endpoint support only one transfer type, which is a replication. Replication kind of transfers is a transfer that always stream data and never stops. The replication is, is a little bit different from a snapshot because it's infinite, basically. The only possible way to stop replication is uh, by a user interaction with it. So I create this replication stream and just activate it. So what happens in the background? In the background, we will start a replication job. This replication job will took new items from Kinesis data data stream, uh, parse them, forms a logical row for a table in a click house and insert into a click house. So if I change something here, let for example, make Sarah not Sarah two, but maybe name it more properly Sarah Connor. This probably uh, insert, this is a change of a row and change of a row will be tracked by Kinesis and we will replicate this Kinesis in a row in a click house. So the replication is already started. We already start transferring some data. So we can see this data in actual click house. So we come back to the WebSQL. Let me refresh my table. Yes, we have one more table. I want to switch context to this table. Yes, and here are our Sarah Connor. Uh, which I modified a second ago. And we also have the all necessary meta information and we have our age, name and ID. And in rest information, you can see a rough a row information about what exactly happens with all necessary metadata. So if I insert something, let me create item, for example. So, oh, I don't know, I, I don't want create, I want to clone. So it would be eight years old, uh, John. So if I create, so if I create this item in Kinesis data in DynamoDB, this item will replicate it in a Kinesis. Then we will read it from a Kinesis, parse it, and lend it to a click house. This happens in real time. So if I execute a query, I will see my John Griffith. Here it is. Oh, it's not John Griffith, it's John Griffith. Anyway, we will you will see that John is here. He is 80 years old. His ID is 12. And the last event that happens with him was insert. This actually is uh, forming your landing layer inside of a click house. Based on this landing uh, data, you actually can build very sophisticated uh, data pipelines afterwards via materialized view. I will not show this for demo purposes because it's usually more complicated or advanced scenario, but overall ClickHouse is a powerful tool which allow you to do a complex pipeline after you land your data in real time. So for each push in your streaming table, will, uh, ClickHouse will apply some computation and this computation will land uh, a form a form uh, like aggregated, query for, uh, aggregated table, for example. So this is a very powerful tool here. So I come back to the presentation, boring presentation. Yes, Zipan, can you go to the next slide? Yes. Uh, 
Uh, I will not demo this particular scenario for you because we demoed it recently. You can scan this uh, QR code and go to the link uh, provided there. Uh, this is a similar approach for uh, building your data pipeline, but fully open source. Uh, I know you already face this uh, vendor locking problem with uh, Kinesis, uh, with a rock set, but actually uh, DynamoDB and a, and a Kinesis also appropriated tool. Uh, it's from Amazon, so it's not so quickly to abandon, but it still has some risks. And having fully open source setup uh, is uh, a nice option here. And you can see how the fully open source setup of streaming analytic analytical pipeline with a Kafka transfer and a click house work. Uh, you can see this webinar and uh, explore what it's on by yourself. So let's go to the next slide. And I think I'm done. Yes, uh, we finish with the demos. We finish with the basic explanation how to kick off the uh, migration from Rockset to a ClickHouse and how you can migrate uh, your ingestion pipelines for uh, for ClickHouse with a double cloud. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If there is, oh, Pinot versus ClickHouse pros and cons. Uh, well, actually, the Pinot in a credit house is actually very comparable solutions. To be honest, uh, we do have uh, a nice article to compare both of them. Uh, in some categories, uh, Pinot can outperform ClickHouse. In some categories, ClickHouse can outperform Pinot. Uh, I would say uh, the main difference for the main standing point for the Peanut is uh, they have uh, uh, how to say uh, uh, they they have fully separated compute nodes and this is pros and cons at the same time. Uh, from the pros perspective, you have fully dedicated compute instances and fully dedicated storage. In basically industry, but on a con side, you can do uh, fine tuning your uh, your database, and in some cases, it can be slower uh, because querying the this uh, sometimes sometimes uh, sometimes you can yeah, you can be slower, and also in in terms of uh, Pinot, one of the uh, strength part of Pinot is that they have. Uh, like streaming capabilities, but support of JSON, uh, JSON type in a Apache Pinot is not so great comparing to a ClickHouse. ClickHouse can automatically infer JSON object as a semi-structured data, and it's quite cool, if, especially for streaming, especially for fast pacing components. Uh, in terms you can also of look into the benchmarks website to get more detail on the performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you can you can explore the benchmarks here, and uh, but once again, uh, if you need a latency, for example, like sub sec sub millisecond latencies, and Pinot is not like that good for you, but ClickHouse is much better here, especially okay. if you need latency on on the hard concurrency. And on top of it, ingestion is also another aspect, right? Within Double Cloud, we kind of have this ingestion as a separate scaled uh, services yeah. where we can just uh, have these dedicated services just for ingestion and have this separate instances for just for the computation and storage purpose. So that makes it more easy for customers to uh, like leverage upon the best of the two, the two tools. Yeah, and another thing that uh, you need to consider when you're uh, thinking about Apache Pinot is uh, ClickHouse itself, especially like managing ClickHouse uh, on premise is quite challengeable task, but managing, managing Apache Pinot uh, by itself is even more manageable because it contains out of them more components and most of them are stateful and it's much more complicated process. There is a managed uh, Apache Pinot on the market, but uh, usually it's uh, 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 if you want to like have an option to go away from managed solution to open source, you will have faced the problem of exploitation of Apache Pinot, which is not uh, that easy. Okay. If no more questions, oh yeah.
The cars handle upset, absorbs incremental load of batch data. Is it easy? Well, the, the, the that's actually a very good questions about absorbs and incremental load uh, for ClickHouse. Uh, the question is, how does ClickHouse handle absorbs slash incremental load of a batch data? Is it easy? Uh, the short answer, no, it's not easy. Uh, but long answer, it's easy with a combination of, of a right tool. And we have this right tool, which is basically a transfer. Uh, when we have the absorbs workload to a ClickHouse, we usually rely on uh, some advanced uh, engines <laughs> because ClickHouse by itself is an analytical database, a columnar database, an a columnar analytical database, which basically say that it's can delete data and can update data. Uh, but uh, under the hood, it emerged data always in the background, and those merge can delete data and can update data. In a ClickHouse, there is a special engine that allow you to emulate updates and deletes. And if you use them right, you can actually achieve what you need. You can achieve very good uh, speed and uh, convenience of upsorts and you can even uh, achieve the delete functionality with uh, with some limitation uh, with those engines but sometimes it's not that easy that's why we double cloud we have the cloud native ELT tool basically uh, but uh, that's actually possible and uh, and uh, sometimes it's even it, it, even really performant yes if no more questions let's wrap it up uh, it was a pleasure to present this uh, wonderful yeah. talk and thanks, cool. Andre, for this beautiful demo. It was really, really useful as well. So yeah, you can get in touch with us. Uh, you can reach out to our website, and also you can scan this QR code to fill in contact form to get more details. So we are happy to help you guys in the migration from uh, Rockset. Uh, I know it's very time is very critical by by September to do it. So we are happy to help. So jump in on a call, and we'll be happy to share and support you guys in that uh, journey. So thank you so much, and uh, see you in another webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys.